is Tuesday, December the 8th, and we're on the second recording for this unit, 6-2. What are we doing? Volumes of Revolution. Yay! Yay! So, let's do it. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, by the way, let me know when it says 10 minutes. I got a fake egg timer over here. I, whoa, it's magnetic. Jeez. That's going to wreck something. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Well, the hard drive is over there. So, <laughs> so, kindly consider the following. What if I gave you this graph? Let's say, oh, I don't know, y equals rad x. And I want the, consider the area bounded by the curve, the x-axis, and the line uh, x equals 4. Let's say like here. Let's say this is x equals 4. Okay? So there's the vertical line x equals 4. So see this region here, this area? All right, that's not the question. The question isn't what's the area. The question is what's the volume you get if you revolve this region about the x-axis? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, let's start with a vertical strip like we usually do. Like a Riemann rectangle. What's the thickness of this thing? How wide is it? One. No. Well, okay. Dx, dx. It's infinite. Let's say it's infinitesimally small. Now, what happens if you just take this little piece of the area, not the whole thing, just this little piece here, and revolve it around the x-axis? What do you get? Yeah, what kind of volume? What shape? It's like a, sh a small, short cylinder, right? Or like, like, well, we call it a disc. A disc? Yeah, the shape of a coin, say. Yeah. All right, and the coin has a different radius depending on where you draw it. If you draw it here, it's very small. If you draw it here, it's very humongous, right? I know so, it's kind of like areas of your It's going to involve, right, it's going to involve area of a circle. So let's say it looks something like this. I'm not good at this, but all right. So that strip, let's say we revolve it around the x-axis, we get this little disk. My question is, what's the volume of the disk? If we know the volume of any disk we draw, we just add them all up and we're done. Farther, minus, all right. closer. Not yet. You're ahead of me. That's two days from now. That's if there's a hole in the middle. OK. I, all right, look at the circular face. What's the area of a circle? Pi r squared. What's the radius going to be? It's a distance from the x-axis to the curve. So it's the, it's the y value, yes? Uh -huh. All right, so that radius changes. You know, if it's here, the radius is, uh, if you plug in 4, the radius is 2, right? Yeah. Here it's 0. Here it's somewhere between there, right? OK, so that's the area of the face. What if I multiply by the thickness, the dx? Do I get the volume of that short cylinder? All right, so how do you add up all those cylinders that are infinitely thin? No, because it's not a cylinder. Oh. Look, if, imagine, if you revolve this whole thing around the x-axis, it's almost, if this was straight, it's almost a cone, right? It's a little bit bumpy, so it's not a cone. It's almost like a bullet shape, really, right? So how would you set up that integral? We're going to integrate because we want to add up a whole ton of slices, right? That's what we do with Riemann rectangles. We're going to do this with Riemann slices. There's a Riemann argument still. So the volume of evolution about the line y equals 0, in other words, the x-axis, is pi r squared dx. All right, that's the volume of one cylinder. How do I get, or one disk, how do I get all the disks? Integral from, well, in this case, 0 to 4, but let's say a to b in general, whatever it is, OK? So if you integrate from a to b and get all the disks, you add them all up, you get all the volume, right? OK, let's rewrite this in terms of our problem. Who's r? Well, you said r was the function value, the y value here, right? The function value is right x. So what happens if you square that radius? It becomes x. It becomes x. Technically, it's the absolute value of x, but we're dealing with positive x's, so it doesn't matter. So let's say, for our example, it's pi, the integral of x dx. And what were the limits of integration? 0 to 4. 0 to 4. Perfect. All right, so it boils down to a very simple integral, doesn't it? That's not too bad. OK, so let's see what you get. Integrate and you get, what's the antiderivative? x squared over 2. x squared over 2 times pi evaluated from 0 to 4 using the first fundamental theorem. 
All right, now what's nice about zero is it drops out. So let's just worry about the four. Four squared, 16 over two, eight pi cubic units is your answer. That's it, done. Is that terrible? That's easy. Yeah, not gonna happen during the test. Maybe. All right. Um, let's change it up a little bit. I'm going to use the same uh, function, y equals rad x, on the same interval from 0 to 4. But now what I want is what's, what happens if we take, ugh, I don't like that. What happens if we take, um, Yeah, I don't like that either. A little bit higher. It's, no, I don't like that either. It's got to be where it meets here. Zzz, boom. Okay, that's better. Okay, what if I take a look at the line y equals uh, 2? Okay, and now I'm talking about the region bounded by the line, the curve, and the y-axis, this region. And I'm going to revolve it about the line y equals 2. Okay, so I'm drawing a, a Riemann rectangle. Its thickness is still, what? How thick is that, that rectangle? The base of the rectangle is what? Dx, right? Just like last time? Now what's the radius of rotation? If I rotate this around the line y equals x, it looks sort of like this. Say, all right? So what about this disk, all right? So I'm getting a little weird cone shape again, right? If you think of this reflected over here, it's a big sort of cone that sort of inverted a little bit here. Okay, so how do you get the volume of this one slice, and then how do you add up all the slices to get that volume? Okay, the volume of revolution about the line y equals 2 equals pi r squared x. But what's r? What's this radius of rotation? How long is it? 2 minus rad x, perfect. So like, if, rad, if you're at 4, rad x is 2, so 2 minus 2 would be 0. If you're at 0, rad x is 0, you have 2 minus 0 is 2. And then anything between, you have like 2 minus 1, 2 minus a half, 2 minus 3, whatever it is, right? Okay, so let's write that. 2 minus rad x. Now remember, what are you doing with the radius? What did we do with it last time? The, What's the area of a circle? I R squared. You got a square. Okay. So that's the area of the of each circular face, depending on where you slice it. But what's the thickness? Dx, right? And we integrate from zero to four. Yep. Okay. So now it's a little bit uh, a little wackier to integrate this, but it's still just a basic little integral we know how to do. Now, is this a new set? No, if you take this as u, du is nothing like this. It's too complicated. So it's not a u step. So let's flow it out. Okay, flow it out before we integrate. We're not integrating yet. All right, so if you flow it out, you get, what do you get? You get 4 minus 4x. Is that 10 minutes? This thing's a piece of junk. It's good. All right. Uh, to the 1 half, let's say. Oh, yeah. Okay, plus? Uh -huh. Plus x, right? Well, it's rad x squared, so, red, so it's x. Okay? And we're integrating with respect to x. Okay, good. So I'll integrate. What's the antiderivative here? 4x. 4x. Four four x. Now, x to the 1 half becomes x to the? 3 halves. 3 halves times? 2 thirds. 2 thirds, but we had a negative 4. Already times two thirds is what? Um, Negative eight thirds, right? Plus? Plus? X squared. X squared. Okay, we're going to evaluate that from zero to four. We're going to multiply the answer by the Oh, where's yeah, the two? We said it, didn't we? Whoops. Okay, we're going to integrate from zero to four. We're evaluating from zero to four, multiply the answer by the pi, and you're done. Okay, again, the zero drops out, right? So what do you get? Four times four is 16. Now it's four to the one half. 
two. Two cubed? Eight. Eight times negative eight? Negative 64 thirds. And then four squared? 16 over two? Eight. Okay, so let's clean this up a little bit. All righty. Um, let's see, that's 24. So we really have pi times 24 minus 64 thirds. Uh, multiply top and bottom by three, you got 72 thirds minus 64 thirds is eight thirds pi cubic units. Okay, I think we're done. Is that 10 point something? Yes.